Okay, we're at the i-uv.com website. Uh, I was just looking for some more updates. Um, this is from, what, two days ago. I think this is when she got to Knoxville. Uh, this is just notes that BZ made on a phone call with her. Uh, I was at work and received a no caller ID or a no ID caller call from H or Heather. How did she sound, her energy? She was relieved, rolling her eyes at the zoo. Just went through, excited, uh, appalled, even with what I have seen at the level of corruption, confident, fired up, ready to finish this, brimming with love, flowing to each of you. I told Heather what I had set up for prepaid calling in this new facility and how to use it, what code to give, she asked me to fill her in on what I'm doing and what's happening. I told her we will. Uh, be hiring our own stenographer for the court hearing. How about that, guys? Yay. They'll be hiring their own transcriptionist for the audio to transcribe. Yay. Those are two huge things. And, uh, and I'm just so happy, happy to see this is in a conversation with her. That's huge. So... So yeah, it looks like the team's starting to really show signs of, of really fortifying well. She said uh, both of those were brilliant and very important, would make a big difference because they are making the choices to hide things and falsify physical evidence that those choices have serious outcomes for them. Having as many people local to Tennessee and other areas to the court hearing that it was looking like we would have a group from Florida, among other places. Having someone like Neil W., if not him, outside the court building during the hearing to cover live. Uh, that I was working to get a local PAC, public access community TV reporter with professional equipment in the courtroom to cover proceedings. H said she was blown away by this and in awe of what she was feeling and about this doing. I told her we were digging under the ground on the USAA exec who was on the complaint. I told her we were digging under the ground on the judge on the docket on, I guess that's Randy's case. H said that the judge in Randy's case has been paid off. She said that she is familiar with the quote unquote price list that has passed around from the initial investigation she did, uh, which I think she calls the paradigm report but she is seeing firsthand how far it has expanded that the judge has been paid to bury and block things. She said that is the case in particular with many of the players. I said it's the case with the one who fell off the hill. He adds and subtracts letters depending upon his geographical location. I, I think this comment is about Parker Still here. Uh, I, I don't understand what this part, the one who fell off the hill smiley face, but it, he, it's proven. He does add or subtract letters depending upon his geographical location uh, in court. So Heather laughed at that, said he was very good at what he does. Mr. Parker, who has gone over the hill and fallen off. Hmm. Mr. Parker, is this Mr. Parker still? or somebody with the last name of Parker. I'm guessing this is Parker Still. <laughs> Parker Still, who has gone over the hill and fallen off. Oh my goodness. H said by spelling his name like that two different ways, he can save himself from all the dings slash charges hitting all from one of his accounts, and instead it spreads over the two. Uh, so these are just BZ's notes on a telephone conversation. I'm really curious to what this sentence is, is all about and what Heather's suspicions are. Uh, there are. There are ways to give an FBI agent an expense account or multiple expense accounts, or he can set up two accounts for himself and spread expenses over them. He doesn't need to add the additional misdirection of spelling his name differently, especially when it's, those are tied to court proceedings. 
uh, especially when those court proceedings are about the same matter. I told her that the main thing I was doing, what I considered the very most important doing, was to get as many beings, thousands plus, to play with me in focusing on the big, big outcome. Not just the Hat J and Randall K, Randall K. Bean outcome, walking free in Tennessee, but the real outcome, the expansive one. H said, yes, the big, big one. I said that was the outcome I was focused on, that I was working up strategies to coordinate cooperation, to play and amplify that outcome, because I knew that that would change, shift, alter the flow of the court case and all. H said, yes, that will alter the flow of all. I'm so grateful you're focusing, you're doing on that. I told her that so far the only charge they had listed was a federal charge 999, and I mentioned that in another video. And uh, I have not done this legwork that, that she's done. Uh, what, I, what I've done here is, is this is where I got that information from earlier, the, that 999 uh, wasn't showing up with anything. And I just want to say I have not looked this up for myself yet. That's on my to-do list. That's getting longer by the minute. Um, if somebody else would like to do a video about that and, uh, and throw a link my way, uh, that would be great. So H asked what the 999 charge details and uh, BZ had done some searching and couldn't find any returns for it. The DOJ website for the criminal resource manual section 901 to 999 just has that as the 999 charge codes within that section only gave charge detail up to 979. So she was gonna dig into more and relay that on the next call uh, if there was anything to find. Let's see, Heather said that the other guest knew who she was. I, I, I think guests, she means inmates, that they knew what was going on and that a few had been following what was going on and what she and everyone was doing since the beginning of July. I told her that now she was Caucasian because we watched her lineage change on these booking records. Uh, she had gone through several transformations from leaving DC. First she was African American, then she was African lineage, and now in Oklahoma she's just Caucasian. And of course she's had her name spelled Hather and Heather, so uh, I just can't believe all the different changes that have happened in this case. And you know what? Heather hasn't even been arraigned yet. The arraignment is where uh, the defendant is formally char or formally notified of the charges that they are facing, and we haven't even gotten there yet. How many, uh, how many videos have I put up already? I don't know, and we're not even at the arraignment. I mean, that's the biggest exclamation point so far, guys. Uh, she laughed, said Yosef had mentioned one of those changes to her. I think Yosef is the, the Terran, the Terran Cognito guy, I'm pretty sure. Heather said that she had to spend quite a bit of time with people who were attempting to book her because they wanted to book her with the name spelled wrong. She said, that's not my name, Hather. She finally did get them to spell her name correctly, Hat J, all caps. They told her where to sign and she signed without prejudice. All the other women in there were watching her, and when each one of them stepped up for their turn, they all, each one, signed their name without prejudice. Big laughs on that. H said they were not pleased that everyone was signing this way. She said it was a great trip out to Oklahoma, that Con Air is not like the movie. It's really plush and very nice, much better than the regular airlines that people have to fly on. H said others on the plane, the marshals, etc., were looking at her and wondering what she was doing on the cushy ride. She told them what she was in for, and they all go it, got it, I think. Uh, Heather asked about the docs now in our files that have been stamped by Tennessee. I told her all the new docs Patricia had filed that Lisa created have been stamped, and we have copies. I told her the cancellation of True Bill has been stamped, and we have copies. I told her I would confirm that uh, that Heather copy all 
UCC filings and annexes and factualized trusts have been stamped and we have copies. I told her I was pretty sure but could not bring visual of the Tennessee version into my site so would double check. The others I was certain of because I could bring them in the site. Heather said they have not, oh, here we go, they have not even arraigned her. They still have to have an arraignment hearing for her. I told her that there were two dates for Randy, a hearing date and a trial date. I told her could not remember the exact hearing date, but was in September after Labor Day before the 9th. Would look up and make sure next contact she called would have that information. She said to keep continually checking. Then she laughed and said, I don't have to say that. You guys are so amazing and are all over it ahead of it. She said we blew Bose out of the water. He said he didn't know how her team was doing it because they knew things were happening, moving, or being filed before he did. She said to keep checking for an arraignment hearing scheduled before that first hearing date that Randy has, then let her know. H said the first hearing in court, she needs one copy of the stamped UCC filings with annex lists and factualized trust documents filed for Heather Ann Tucci Giraffe in Tennessee, stamped in Tennessee. One copy of stamped UCC filings with annexes list and factualized trust documents filed for Randall Keith Bean in Tennessee, stamped in Tennessee. One copy of stamped document filing of canceled true bill filed in Tennessee. One copy of Hat J factualized trust. One copy of Randall's factualized trust. H said, I love you. Thank you, BZ. Tell everyone that I love you. You know, her comments about Con Air and this conversation with the marshals, that's... That's non-standard. I, 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 can't, I can't really put any other word on it, but, but that's... And it was really plush. I've, I've never been on Con Air. I've never had to transport a prisoner on an airplane. Uh, I know some cops that, that have done that and they've just used regular commercial flights, but you know, we're dealing with the feds here. Gosh, I don't, I just don't know what their procedures are around that. That's, that's just interesting. Okay. So she had another short call with Heather. Um, they can start using phones at about 7.30 to 8 local time. She'll call one of us early. She anticipates being moved as early as tomorrow morning to Tennessee. So she's in Oklahoma uh, as this phone call is happening. She says not to worry about the documents. She's got it handled. She loves and appreciates her amazing team and everyone. Bill on hiring the stenographer for the hearings. H would like to have us give her the person's name and phone number so she can contact her right away. Oh, awesome. That is fantastic. H said she is very, very pleased to hear about the plans for focusing on the big, big outcome. She stressed this is so important that she agrees how it will amplify and shift the flow of the court hearing slash case. So it's very important to expand and amplify now. She said that the judge Parker still, she said that the judge Parker still steal at all are making their choices and different factions in the families. That is why all this is unfolding so that all the purported justice system and all other systems, what I refer to as quote unquote false construct, all of it is falling down, crumbling, falling away, can be made visible to all. She is so grateful to all because each one who does as they feel moved to do adds their part to this final reveal. Heather talked about that or Heather talked about that there are lar that there are huge outcomes for quote the ones end quote and their choices especially choosing to take a step to falsify physical evidence go in and strike documents from the record etc the outcomes of their choices are very heavy heather said 
her discounted rate in hourly fee that is being drawn off the accounts of these beings is 2.6 quadrillion per hour. That is my discounted rate, she explains. <laughs> I just don't know what to say to that. I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> She's moving forward in love, coming to resolution softly, and unbinding all. But their choices have outcomes, and they are acutely feeling all of those now. Heather asks that we keep checking, scanning the Tennessee court schedule calendar for any hearing that is scheduled for her. Needs to know as soon as we see it. Heather said we would call in the morning if she was not or she would call in the morning if she was not transported and she would call as soon as possible if she is transported in the morning of 816 so here 816 this is yesterday today is the 17th of August and we got an email from Heather to Denise so I when I was working in a jail, like email was out and it was a thing, but the, the inmates in the jail, they did not have access to email, but we're, let's see, this was what, back in 2001? Uh, so I don't, and this is a federal system. I was working in a county system at the time. So, you know, uh, and she's got an email coming from her. Uh, I don't. Huh. I, I wonder what all the header and stuff would look like. So she does make a comment that, that her inmate number ends in 007, kind of like James Bond. And, and she, she chuckled at that or made a little joke about that. But, uh, hmm. I, I've i never seen an email that uh, was sent from an inmate that was in custody. So this is on the IUV website. I don't have any reason to doubt it. Uh, it's just I haven't seen that. So from Heather, awesome. The Federal Reserve Bank, I love them. All reversals are being reversed immediately. The Federal Reserve knows... Rather, they just found out if the Federal Reserve doesn't reverse the reversals, the Federal Reserve gets locked out of all the systems globally, and the system self-power, self-automate, self-facilitate, self-validate, and self-correct reversals of the reversals per the orders of each original depository. Um, I, I, I guess I'm wondering where Heather gets this information. Um, I mean, she's in custody right now. Uh, I, I, I wish there, I wish she were, were able to cite something in here, but I mean, aside from this being on the IUV website, and all I can say is that everything I've checked out with IUV so far appears to check out, appears to be on the up and up, appears to be of, of a high vibration and in the highest and best interests of all involved is what I can say right now. I don't have any reason to say otherwise. All I can say is I, I'm just not... Uh, I'm not familiar with inmates writing emails uh, while they're in custody. Uh, you know, and that's just a, a sign of the techno technological changes that have happened since I was a cop. So I, I just wonder where this information comes from. I mean, I've seen some other videos. Uh, the Mike O'Brien channel's got got a bunch of videos about reversals of reversals now. Uh, I haven't watched them, but but I, I I've seen that idea out there. So guess what the primary standing order was from this original depository? See above. Laugh out loud. Honey, I will share with all the amazing work 
and the powerful universal beings that are doing within the prison systems. It is beyond amazing. And all are beyond happy and joyous that this money monster is in its final moments. My inmate, inmate number ends with 007. Laugh out loud. Details on the global massive prison doing later. What is... What... What is that? I mean, I... Any physical mail... Like, when I was working in the jail... The, the only way the inmates could send a message out uh, was either by a phone call, which all of those were recorded, and uh, if not actively listened to, uh, or they had to write it down on paper, and they had to go to the commissary and buy stamps and... Uh, and mail it themselves, you know? And, and all their mail that was coming in uh, got read and all the mail that was going out got read so if they were sending a, a letter to an inmate that was in another module well I got read on the way out of their module and on the way into the other module and uh, and I can't imagine that they're going to allow inmates unfettered email access and and I'm really Details on the global massive prison doing later. Uh, if I was part of the system reading that, that would that would raise my eyebrow. I, I don't know why she put that in there, and I don't know what that's referring to, but I mean, I, I, I just don't know. Please amplify my tones of love and gratitude. Love to all. Uh, then Denise is responding back to her. We got love being sent back and forth. Okay, so on the 16th, did he cancel the true bill and case? And this is Heather talking. And if yes, was the cancellation done after he did the purported arraignment? If yes, all is good. One is self. Explain to me how one requests to be self. Lol. Give me a bit. I will come back later tonight with something appropriate. Love you beyond measure. Hi, honey. RKB would like input on what to do about the previous not guilty plea at the prior arraignment. Now requesting pro se. Hearing scheduled for the 29th to put his request in for pro se to judge. Love you beyond measure. All right, so here's an email that's supposedly from today. I'm still here, laugh out loud, currently accumulating my hourly fee of 2.16 quadrillion U.S. dollars payable in pre-1933 gold and silver from the Federal Bureau of Prisons, the FBI, the U.S. Marshals, Federal Court, etc., with original issues ready to go. Shipping, quote-unquote, will occur between now and next Wednesday, maximum shifting being done at all levels and and I am in complete gratitude for all doing, for Randy and everyone. They do not have due, due, due jurisdiction, personam, or subject matter and authority, period. And until they establish due jurisdiction and authority, which they cannot ever, they cannot ask for a plea, they cannot ask for anyone to waive purported rights to counsel, nor even ask for your name, etc., in the event they believe they have duly presumed, inclusive of presuming jurisdiction, to be able to ask for a plea, etc., it was already taken care of. It was already duly established, secured, and perfected as a due matter of public record, the Perpetuity Amendments Factualized Trust, four and a half years ago, that said presumptions were prohibited from being duly established and rendered null and void and canceled at inception of being made for due cause, nunc pro tunc and praetera praetera. That has been the case in America since September 2012 and globally since October 2012. All of that is clearly and duly expressed, secured, perfected, and a matter of public universal record since November 2012 declaration of facts. However, 
feel free to duly cancel any such presumptions again, easy peasy. And for those that still seek to create presumptions that are just testa frigandura, the script is very focused. It has been duly established, secured, and perfected as a due matter of public record that the purported prosecutor, DA, general, state, does not have the due jurisdiction and authority to make this purported action against me, nunc pro tunc praetera praetera. It has been duly established, secured, and perfected as a matter of public record that purported court judge name does not have due jurisdiction and authority to hear this purported action against me, nunc pro tunc praetera praetera. It is duly established, secured, and perfected as a matter of public record that you judge do not have the due jurisdiction and authority to ask me that question. Thusly, to answer that question would violate my deeply held religious dictates. Uh, what? Not to answer that question. I, I don't like the words she chooses here, religious dictates. Uh, Maybe she she's the lawyer. I, I don't know. That just doesn't that doesn't feel right to me. Um, correction. Correction of script, third phrase. It has been duly established, secured, and perfected, and as a due matter of public universal record that you judge do not have the due jurisdiction and authority to ask me that question, nunc pro tunc praetera praetera, and thusly to answer said question would be a violation of my deeply held religious dictates, bella giornata a tutti. Well, I don't speak that language. Okay, so this is this is the document uh, dissolves the purported judicial court system right here that was filed. Oh yeah, we remember Deborah Robinson. Okay, well, uh, like I say, I cannot verify that these emails are from Heather. Uh, but they're on the IUV website and they've got some interesting info in there. I just wonder how Heather got that info, um, how the email systems uh, work coming out of, out of uh, the jail there. Uh, and, and wow, just for, for Heather to be very mindful of of the emails that she's sending because apparently the from address where was that like right here the from and then in parentheses it's got this number and that's apparently her well I just say this number ends in 007 and Heather Antucci says that her inmate number ends in 007. So I'm guessing this is her inmate number. And this, I think, is a totally different email account than anything that she was using before she was arrested. So uh, I can't imagine that this stuff is not being read uh, on its way out. And, and I just... I don't know, that just doesn't quite sit well with me, but uh, she just she just needs to be careful about what she says, be very mindful of what she's saying here. That's all. I really don't have a problem with this. All I have is more questions. That's all I've got. All right, take care, guys.